we'll start with a meditation for the new year. Um, we usually start these calls with meditation and then we'll go around and do introductions um, for all of the people who have not joined one of our calls before. <coughs> okay, uh, start by closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in, and as you let it out, notice your body in the space. Notice how the breath moves in through your nose and out again. Let's take three nourishing breaths here. In and out and in and out. And once more in and out. And as you continue to breathe normally, notice that you can direct your attention anywhere you'd like it to go. I invite you to draw your attention to the center of your head, imagining going deep into your consciousness at eye level. Anytime your mind wanders, bring your awareness back to this spot. Still breathing, I invite you to recall the last year. Is there anything that you wish to release? If so, imagine that energy, memory, or even regret coming together and a ball of light floating in front of you. Allow this process to occur at a pace that's comfortable. What color is that energy? Do you feel the old year releasing out of different parts of your body? What does it look like? Still breathing, I invite you to release that ball of energy. Perhaps it floats off into the sun to be burned up in its rays. Perhaps you imagine an angel coming down and carrying it safely away. Or maybe it simply disappears. As you let this energy leave, how do you feel? Take a moment to enjoy the expansiveness of this release. Now, let's fill in those spots that housed the old energy. Consider an intention you would like to set, either a new one or one you'd like to renew. Maybe you imagine writing that intention down in your journal. Or perhaps you imagine what it would be like to hear it spoken aloud by a favorite person. If this intention also looked like a ball of energy or light, what color would it be? Would it be warm or cool? I invite you to imagine a beautiful funnel over your head. This golden funnel simply floats above your head and invites only the best most beautiful energy into your body. Now imagine that funnel draws the energy of your intention into your body, filling up all the empty spaces where the old energy from last year resided. If you feel a physical sensation like a tingling or a twitching, that's simply your body responding to the shift in energy. When it feels as if this energy has filled your body, take a moment to close off your funnel knowing you can reopen it at any time to invite only the best energy into yourself. Let's take another three deep nourishing breaths here and sit in the space with renewed intentional energy. Breathe in and exhale. And take another breath in and exhale. And one more deep breath in and exhale. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring your body back to this time in this space and open your eyes. Welcome back everyone. Okay, let's do a round of introductions for the benefit of the new people we have joining us here today. <coughs> Carolyn and I, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm currently in San Miguel de Allende. Um, I live here and it's really chilly today. Jane. I'm Jane. I live in South Florida and Pompano Beach and it's really chilly here today too, comparatively. Donna. I am Donna. I'm from uh, Mississauga, Ontario and uh, it's sunny and cold, but at least it's sunny. That's the way I look at it. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> exactly. Anne. Hi, Anne um, Thompson. 
Hi, <laughs> I'm in my office, um, but uh, I am in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And um, yeah, this is my, I think this is my first community call. So I'm really happy to be here awesome. <laughs> talking with you ladies. You you all inspire me so much. And I'm so looking forward to the book club too. I, I just, I'm about to order the book and, and sign up for that. So thanks. <laughs> And where are you calling in from, Anne? Oh, I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I live here. Amazing. Mary. I live near Detroit, Michigan. Sandra. I'm um, up here in Montreal, Quebec, and my bragging right is for the very first time I was out in minus 37 degree temperature. <gasps> Oh my God. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Suzanne. I am Suzanne. I'm presently in Ottawa. And for the benefit of Deborah, who's just joining us, we're just doing a round of introductions before we get started. Carolyn. Hi, I'm Carolyn from Halifax and it's not sunny and we're getting ready for a storm and so uh, it's going to get really cold but you know it's just foggy right now it's nice to see all your lovely faces lovely to see you too diana uh hi i'm in las vegas nevada and it's sunny and going to be 60s uh, today but mostly i want to say um how glad i am to be back i've been gone for four months and I'm so happy to see so many familiar faces. So we're so hi. happy you're back too. <laughs> Welcome back, A2022. Thank you. <laughs> Maria. Hi everyone. I'm Maria from Long Island, New York, where it's a little reasonably warm here, 43 degrees. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Are you there, Jenny? Okay, I'll come back to you. Michelle. Hi, I'm uh, actually, I go by Mickey. I should oh, okay. change my name on the screen. Welcome, <laughs> um, I'm a native Southerner and everybody who grew up in the South has a nickname. So my name is Mickey uh, and I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. Amazing. Maureen. Hi, I'm joining from Victoria, BC. I'm happy to be here. Deanna? Hi, I'm from Maryland and right outside of Washington, DC. It's 44 degrees here today on the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> Tracy. Hi, sorry. Um, I'm Tracy from Toronto. I've been on a couple of calls over the last few years, but haven't been on one for a long time. So looking forward to the discussion today. Amazing. Welcome. And uh, Deborah is unable to uh, join the uh, in in uh, audio because she's uh, having some work done on her apartment. But welcome, Deborah. Uh, and Jenny just rejoined. Are you able to say hello, Jenny? Okay. Uh, so we're going to get started. This is uh, this session is all about setting an intention for 2022 and uh, intentions are a little bit different than goals because goals tend to put pressure on a person and they're tied to an external outcome uh, where as intentions sort of align us with our purpose. Um, I'm going to give you an example. A traditional 2022 goal is like I want to lose 10 pounds by the end of the year um, and that sort of even if I lose nine pounds, it creates the feeling of failure in me because I was tied to something specific instead of, you know, an intention being, I would like to make healthy choices in 2022 and making healthy choices is something that's available to me several times every day and allows me to, to um, feel a sense of, of win and celebration every single day. And it's not tied to a specific specific outcome because any any strides I make towards becoming healthier um, helps me achieve that. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of an intention. There's a, uh, 
somebody wrote this this poem and it speaks perfectly to intentions uh live with intention walk to the edge listen hard practice wellness play with abandon laugh choose with no regret continue to learn appreciate my friends do what i love and live as if this is all there is so that person had a lot of intentions for the year um, but our goal by the end of this uh, is to come up with a word or a phrase that's sort of going to anchor us in 2022. And you can choose to uh, come up with an intention for travel, which is the hope. But if there's another area of your life that you want to focus on, or even an intention that you want to set in another area of your life that will benefit you uh, when you travel, uh, that is perfect. So my first question for everyone is, I want to know what fills you with passion, joy, and a sense of purpose um, because there will be hints as to what your values are and maybe even some gold to mine for setting your intention this year. Let's start with Christine. Um, well, I mean, it's obvious it's travel. That's always been it. That's always will be it. That's, that's the be all and end all. <laughs> and give me a, a, a little color context about uh, what it is about travel that that does that for you i think it's just it for me i mean it's it's even the the thrill of stepping on the airplane like it's just something different something new something exciting something to look forward to some you know different culture different being you know seafood like you know whatever, whatever it, it all involves but it's the the act of of I'm going to go somewhere and starting the planning from to the actual, you know, planning and whatever, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, a week at a yoga retreat or, you know, six months, you know, backpacking around South America, whatever, it's just the whole thing is, is a reason to breathe. So I, I heard like values of freedom, discovery, <laughs> knowledge, novelty. Would Independence, yeah, <laughs> all that. <laughs> okay. cool. It's my right to live, damn it. I told you, it's, this is all about me. <laughs> Amazing. Jane. What fills Life you with itself. joy and passion and purpose? Life itself gives me the joy to, to get up and look out my window and say, you live in Florida and it's so wonderful here after having lived in Western New York and and having my health and a home and friends and the ability to travel, a good pet, it all, the, my life is my passion. Nice. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I, also, I also heard freedom in there. Um, what else do you value? What would you say are some of your personal values? I I value my friendships and my family. Um, I value my health. I, I am just now getting over a batch of a bout of COVID, so but I've been not bad, so I, I'm I'm appreciative of that. I I value my successful aging process, which is part of health and attitude. It's, it's my attitude, I think, more than anything else. The ability to, to laugh and smile and appreciate and enjoy. Amazing. Thank you, Jane. Donna. Hi there, sorry. Um, as far as what gives me joy, it would be my definitely my family, my grandkids. I have five now, and which can keep you busy you know, although they live far away it's still I get still get a chance to enjoy um, time with them through FaceTime and as far as passion and uh, things like learning new things uh, to me really drive passion in me you know once I grab a hold of something I can't let go of it and I just immerse myself in it and uh, as far as purpose the I'm a very goal-oriented person so having a you know, having those goals set up at the beginning of the year and, and working on them and revisiting them every month, et cetera, to make sure that I'm moving forward, that gives me my purpose, but also helping others is, is definitely something that 
gives me purpose. And I do that through teaching English as a second language. Cool. So I heard connection, knowledge, discovery, accomplishment, and uh, like constant forward motion. Yeah. Cool. And. So <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, my immediate like like this morning my my passion is my if you can see her my 15 year old dog uh. <laughs> her name is moggy um i got that word from a visit to australia years ago um which i i hope to return to one day um that that trip just uh, meant so much to me and uh at a time in my life that and i'm actually like writing bits of it down just to you know just for myself uh journaling about it um, but as far as my day to day, it's um, I, I work uh, at a university where um, I'm helping students, um, and that's that's definitely my my life calling. Um, and I have a, a master's in English, so I, I you know I like to um, express myself in you know various ways, and uh, you know I have a passion for learning and for words, and uh, and definitely for travel. That's uh, I've. I've traveled to other places, not just Australia, and uh, I want to travel more and, uh, and yeah, so, and be inspired by learning and by traveling and meeting people, <laughs> meeting amazing women like you. <laughs> amazing. So I, I, I heard similar, similar values to some of the other ladies, but also uh, a connection to nature with your dog and, and travel as a value. Can, and travel can be a value, I would say. Mary. You still there, Mary? Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> I had to step away for a few minutes. Um, I'm in a transitional period um, now where I'm refocusing on myself um, as um, direct as that sound, that's di as direct as I'm being because up to this point, my focus has been um, instinctively external to help others um, in my job as a manager, in my family, as the um, uh, progressive uh, big picture thinker, as a friend. Um, and I'm getting ready to retire within the next uh, three to four months. And it's my time now and so all of my focus primarily is on uh, my physical mental emotional spiritual psychological well-being in whatever form or fashion that takes without apology without explanation uh, i'm not anyone's entertainment nor do i want to be entertained or held hostage by someone else's lives or passions or desires it's all about mary um, so, um, what is my passion anything that fills me on any given day on most days i'm inspired by learning more about my family history um, i am a genealogist um, i'm a painter i'm a writer and so my desire to combine those three things to tell the stories of my ancestors who did not have the opportunity to tell their stories is what is fueling my passion most right now. Cool. I just say snaps for all of that, Mary. <laughs> that is amazing. And as we go along, if you hear something that resonates with you uh, that someone else said, feel free to say, sister speaks for me. <laughs> Sandra. Um, well, there were two parts to that. I'm going to look at them. It was passion and sense of purpose. Um, the passion, I didn't realize when it was very little, I always wanted to grow up and be a teacher. There was nothing I wanted more and I was focused on it and I became a teacher and I hated it. And then it took me a while to realize it wasn't the teaching. It was the learning. So the passion is the learning. 
And as soon as I became a journalist, I realized, well, that's what I really want. I want to learn because every day you're asking questions and learning. And so that fits in with travel because you can't get any more learning than the world as your oyster. So learning all that I've learned in all the places I've been, um, it really fills me with joy. But then another part of that was sense of purpose, which I've felt um, since I've been stuck in the house. And I, I love organizing. And I oh. have never felt more sense of purpose than this year where I feel like I got my whole house in order and all the closets and everything I wanted to do. So that's given me a great sense of joy this year. But I want to get back to the passion. And also the passion for travel has now turned into a combination of the learning and the journalists, which is I'm more interested in the people's stories than the country stories. And so joining things like this and hearing what people do and what they want to do is of more interest for the future. Hmm. Sorry, <laughs> I'm muting myself because I have background noise. Um, I was saying lots of deep personal insight there. I love it, Sandra. Suzanne. Um, Sandra, I haven't seen anybody on, for me personally, on this chat that has evolved more than you have since the time we've been talking. It's like you're a completely different person. And I just wanted to let you know that I, I see that in you. And it's really wonderful to see. And uh, it sounds like you're really happy. For me, um, learning, um, mostly about, uh, I've decided to take a six month intensive Spanish course as soon as I get back to Mexico, um, 20 hours a week, so that I am completely fluent. Um, learning about the world, but mostly learning about myself. I have a long way to go about learning about myself, uh, letting go, uh, letting go of everything that doesn't serve me. And that's a lot. Um, if it doesn't contribute to me being a better person, it's like too bad. So sad, you know, I'm going to have to turf you, um, evolving. Um, I, yeah, I want to evolve until the day I die. I want to be on my deathbed and go, ah, oh, you know, and um, mostly, the most important thing for me, my purpose in life is letting people know that I love them, that they are cared for and cherished, um, that everybody in my life has to know that I love them to death and they're the most important person to me. Self-discovery, mm. surrender, growth, and love. Oh. Pretty good. <laughs> Carolyn. Carolyn Marshall. Hi. Well, Hi. like Mary, I feel as though I'm in uh, transition and have been for a few years now. Um, I have been both a civil servant and a consultant, and uh, it's all around public policy and social justice issues. So that's where all of my um, effort has gone. And in fact, I just finished a project on the impact of the pandemic on women in Nova Scotia um, that I finished last year. So, but I'm getting less and less joy from those things. And um, the contribution line isn't always direct. So, you, you know, the impact of your work sometimes takes years to unfold if ever. Anyway, I am wanting to focus more on things that bring me um, joy uh, more directly. <laughs> so um, those things include travel and um, playing music. So I, I sing like joy wherever she is. <laughs> um, and those things have always brought me great um, 
joy in the moment. I've never felt so alive as when I travel for all the reasons that you so eloquently described. Um, but I like, I find joy in the beauty of natural spaces. So being out and feeling connected with nature. Um, my golden retrievers, <laughs> one or two, depending on one, uh, one of them uh, often is with my daughter. So connection with others. Um, so I would say connection with others, uh, the beauty of nature, um, and making, learning and growing and making some sort of contribution that makes things meaningful. So, um, and freedom. So I want, I'm constantly balancing freedom with, you know, responsibility. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, and security, those kinds of things. So I have to be a little careful because I'm uh, immunocompromised. So I feel as though I have to, um, it's wise and responsible <laughs> to travel when things are safer. But I feel, you know, uh, trapped by that as well. So uh, I guess I feel as though I'm, I, I'm constantly trying to move between the freedom to just go and um, experience all the things I want to experience versus um, what's the safe, responsible, and right thing to do. Uh, so, um, and uh, it's a really and, tough thing when our values are getting stepped on. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know, working to support system change and helping others versus you know. Um, meeting my own personal needs. Is that a selfish thing? Anyway, these are just the consistent messages that I continually have to battle through my transition. And so whether I'm going into retirement or I'm just um, part-time employed or I'm, um, uh, you know, uh, on, uh, on hiatus. Oh, there's Blue Jay just flew it. Um, anyway, so my status depends on the, my way of looking at the world today. Anyway, I don't know if, so there's a lot of values in there and uh um yes, I'm, but that's okay and that's you'll end up choosing the one that needs the most attention at, uh, the at any given moment yeah that's right anyway <laughs> that's me diana thank you for um well the most obvious one that everyone's mentioned uh, what fills me with joy is travel of course it also is because it gives me something to look forward to however here's the problem um when travel gets cancelled you're left with a very empty feeling i have four trips planned for 22 uh the first two have already been cancelled um and that kind of loss and hollowness you have to deal with so the things in the moment that give me joy are sewing um i absolutely love sewing. Um, the only problem with that is I tend to isolate myself. Um, I love dance, any form of dance, and going to a dance concert and seeing brilliant dancing just fills me. I just want to rush to the stage and hug every single dancer, you know. Um, and teaching, which I'm about to start back next week. I love it when I see the light bulb go on in a student. And uh, um, I actually had a student over to my house um, the other night, um, and uh, she didn't know how to put in a zipper. So I said, well, like, time you learned. So I showed her how to put in a zipper, and it was like, miracle, miracle. <laughs> um, so I do get um, great joy from, from seeing students suddenly get it, and that's exciting for me. Well, what I heard with your, your artistic pursuits is uh, creation and movement. And mm -hmm. uh, then with your teaching, the sharing of knowledge. Because some people can value knowledge and, some, and others value the, share, the sharing of it. Amazing. Maria. Oh, you're still muted, Maria. Somebody's kitty, I hear too. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> okay, so in terms of passion, joy, sense of purpose, I mean, the, the basics are my family and friends. But beyond that, 
two themes sort of come up for me. One is learning and the other one is helping. Um, my job involves a lot of helping and I see a lot of things that can sort of bring me down. Um, I want people to do better. I, I want to be role model for people that want to do better and see that there is some hope. Um, so for myself, I never want to lose touch with curiosity, knowing that there are always other possibilities. Uh, I'm in, let, in a little over two weeks, I'm leaving for Spain and I don't know what that's going to be like. And <laughs> I am, I want to be open. I know that it's probably not going to go 100% smoothly um, and there are going to be challenges but I want to retain my sense of adventure and also my sense of gratitude that, that I can do this right now. So um, I see a lot of people are traveling and successfully traveling um, and I've already had some speed bumps that I've encountered and flight changes so uh, it's just a matter of knowing that it's still an adventure, maintaining that sense of adventure that, you know, if I'm stuck at an airport for extra time, that it's going to be okay and I can find some adventure. Um, I want to learn about people. I want to learn about cultures, that sort of thing. And um, if I am closed off, I won't be able to do that. But if I, I want to remain open all the time. So that's it in a nutshell. I feel like a value every journey woman should add to her list is JFDI. Just I think do it. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne. Oh, you're still muted, Joanne. Um, I'm going to try and get through this without crying. <laughs> um, Mary took the words right out of my heart. Um, I've been caregiving for my mom for quite a while, and she died in November. So... Um, I'm trying to rediscover myself <laughs> um, and I feel very much like Mary I don't as much as I care about other people and connection is huge for me whether it's with people that I know or people that I am about to meet part of me is tired of being the friend who people call on when they need help um i just i just want to spend some time finding me and um my passions are connecting with nature um um art um i i'm not i i'm not an artist myself but i love art and i have a lot of friends who are artists and i will travel to see art um writing and um and travel and uh and curiosity is a value of mine i i just love learning and knowing more um being as open to new experiences as i can and i've always been that way um i'm lucky in that i was um i was uh applied for and um and was approved for a work writer's workshop in the countryside at a chateau in in France in uh, in June. So, COVID, oh. please behave. <laughs> and I think that's going to help. And I'm going to rent a car, and I'm just going to drive around for two two weeks on either around the the workshop. So, I think in a lot of ways that's going to tie in with a lot of the things that I'm searching for. Mm -hmm. um so um and i'm immune compromised as well so i've been a little nervous about traveling but i've just booked my fourth dose <laughs> injection for monday so i've just decided that since i was approved for it and i got one so fast that's a sign <laughs> that um so now i i haven't i haven't even booked my flight yet but i've decided i'm going to do that this afternoon i just um, and make sure I've got, you know, cancellation and everything. But um, it's um, like Mary said, it's it's time. It's time for uh, 
for you know I'm I'm not a I'm not a spring chicken anymore so in my last act I gotta figure out what it's gonna be so and Joanne I have to say I'm sorry I'm so um, emotional but oh no we welcome that we welcome all emotions here I want to tell you I, I lost my mother in January of last year so I understand what it's it it feels like you're untethered a little bit you're untethered in the world but the other thing that nobody ever really talks about and I do because I feel like it's important is when you have no parents left suddenly all of the stories and the expectations um, and the family obligations leave with them and you are completely free to be authentically yourself without apology and I want you to give yourself permission to rebuild your life to suit you in 2022. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Michelle. Um, I'm passionate about immersing myself in different cultures. Um, I And that means the food, the language, um, the traditions, the clothing, I love it all. It brings me joy. Um, I also, someone else mentioned being an English as a second language teacher. I also uh, am an English in the ESL teacher. And I'm still in contact with several of my students all over the world. And I love that. I mean, you know, I want to find out what they're doing now and how their days are going. And oh, it, it, it just makes me very happy. Of course, you know, that's travel too. I not only live vicariously through them, I like to travel. It is very important to me. I like novelty. I like change. My friends say I run toward change and that is true. <laughs> Uh, I'm easily bored. I need a lot of stimulation. Um, I love to read, but, and whenever I do travel, most of the time I'll do a homestay, especially if I'm forced to speak the language in that situation. Uh, and, you know, I just, it just makes me very happy. And I feel very lucky because a friend of mine who I used to travel with when I was in my twenties, I am now retired. Um, I hadn't heard from and didn't know where she was for over for about 22 years. And she tracked me down back in 2018 through LinkedIn. And we have been traveling together ever since. And that, you know, that connection and that friendship brings me so much joy. Beautiful. Thank you, Michelle. Christine. I went on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Maureen. You moved on my square. <laughs> um, thanks. I the, I I love to travel, and in recent years, I've come to realize that the way I travel best is on my own, independently. I love to travel with others. Um, uh, you know, there's strength in numbers, but um, you know, navigating the world by myself, I find is. Uh, empowering and I have experiences that I wouldn't have if I was with someone else I'm introverted by nature um, but I really step out of myself when I travel um, and I've in re and I've come to love walking holidays um, I've walked the Camino a couple of times and I've had other walking holidays and you know there's something amazing when you walk across a country um, it's hard to do here in Canada because it's so big, <laughs> but um, uh, I, those are the things that really give me energy. And I find that when I'm on a walking holiday, it's a true break because, um, you know, you're in the woods maybe for half of the day or, you know, sometimes you're alone, sometimes you're with others, but it's a real break from my regular life. Um, so, yeah, those are the things that, that really energize me. So I heard that you, you value both solitude and I would say more of a, a, a deeper uh, connection and engagement and stimulation, whether that's with people or your environment or nature. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Maureen. Deanna. Oh my, we don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I am at a crossroads to in my life right now. Um, ready to move to something new, uh, a new way of living, <laughs> um, a different path. I'm a singer-songwriter um, and a fitness instructor. 
I've been that for 20 years, both of those. And now, um, after 23 years in the government, um, and yeah. so I love and value travel and I've done about half of the national parks, but I'd like to, I, I, I can't seem to really take the time, which I put on my calendar every week to, okay, Tuesday's travel planning. And it just, it takes a while, you know, as, as you know, and everyone here, and, and I just, I don't take enough time to do that, but I want to get back to traveling. Um, because of course, I think that, you know, helps us get to the next step that travel is always good for that. And I love nature. I love hiking, kayaking, paddleboard, biking. I just bought a new bike, uh, two years ago, my first racing bike, my last bike is a hybrid and I've had that for 30 years. So I'm very active and I don't know how I got to be this age and, and <laughs> um, but I'm glad I'm here. I, you know, um, and I value learning and just exploration and forward movement in my life. Yeah. So yeah, on, on the travel planning, I think you're being too prescriptive with the Tuesdays for travel planning. That's not too much for failure because not every Tuesday is going to work for you. Yeah, so yeah. A, a better a better goal would be to spend time each week on travel planning, whether that's a minute or two minutes or whatever you can do, and then that's that's definitely more attainable. Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion. Thank you. And then you won't <laughs> feel like you failed every week. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Tracy. Um, hi. Um, you know, it's been really great for me to listen to everyone um, because I haven't really figured it out. And that was one of the reasons why I joined uh, today because I've been in transition probably for about three years. And I would say transition from a career, like a, a corporate, you got to be dependable, committed, reliable, you know, efficient, all of that. So, you know, moving from that to what I want to be outside of that. And, you know, similar to uh, Joanne, I'm, uh, you know, a caregiver for my father um, and his health is failing. So there's part of me that feels that there's a little bit of limbo going on um, where I can't really do and move to what I want to do. Um, which I know a lot of you have experienced or are experiencing, but when I can move to it, um, I want to move to more freedom, uh, the learning, the knowledge, uh, better connections. Um, and uh, I forget who said it, but that letting go, because I've always been the one in control, the one that is the caregiver, the one that makes the decisions and want to live in more of that freedom, letting go space as I evolve. Um, but now where do I find the joy? <laughs> like some of you in my dog, um, I have a golden retriever as well. And, um, you know, in the connections that I have with, uh, with my family and friends. So, um, so that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, the, the transition from what you need or have to do to what you want to do is a hard one, but I would also challenge you to consider how you can bring a flavor of those things you want, even if you can't fully embrace them because there are still things that you have to do. How can you bring a flavor of those things like freedom and learning and growth and all of that into your life every day, at least one tiny thing? Yeah, no, thanks, Amanda. Mary Lee. I see the fan back there, Amanda. You're in Nicaragua. Yay. I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. I, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I think Carolyn's home. I'm sorry, I had a hard time getting, well, I overslept, number one. And then, you know, I was up at five thinking about this. Oh, I need to get up. I need to have some coffee and still get ready. And then I overslept. So, and then I had uh, issues getting out. So anyway, <clears throat> it's all about the browser, I guess. Um, the question was joys and passions. That yeah, you what have. brings you joy and passion and a sense of purpose? 
uh, well, you know what? Journey Woman brings me joy, number one. And not getting on this morning was so frustrating. I'm missing out on what everybody's saying. I want... So it brings me joy. Absolutely travel brings me joy. Um, someone said curiosity. I too am very curious and a researcher and that brings me joy. Nature brings me joy. Yesterday on the patio, I'm outside and a hummingbird came to visit my little fountain. And I just froze and watched this thing for quite a while. I mean, close enough I could reach out and touch him. It was, it was a beautiful thing. I love nature. Um, music and and my connections with people Love it. truly are in, very important to me and with the community here I'm very lucky going through this COVID thing and in Southern California here it's a mess I don't know what it's like everywhere else but bad it's really bad. Like it's a mess everywhere <laughs> yeah there's no place it's not a mess <laughs> <clears throat> very contagious so Anyway, it's good to see all of you and, and welcome back to Carolyn. I don't know how she's feeling about that. I missed out on she's not happy. On comments, but. <laughs> no, but I'm not planning to be here long. So yeah. just a ah. little see my daughter, booster shot, head out again. Ah, yeah. to where? Can I ask? Well, let's leave that and because I know we've got okay. a couple of people, but I'll I'll circle right. back. Okay. We'll we can stay later at the end. All right. Nancy. Super. Uh, I'm sorry, I was late. And in regard to what Tracy was saying, um, I just got back from the Camino, but I, I had to make a decision because I also am a caretaker for my partner and I ended up hiring somebody for 30 days. So um, it was it was his vacation for me and he had been taken care of. But my joys is to continue to travel. And there's a couple of programs. Uh, conversational English programs that are open to any of us, no matter what your nation is, as long as English is your first language, that's a good traveling situation. And I had an offer from my friend in Mexico who I visited last year to go to another conversational program. But one of my goals that would bring me joy would be to get out to California to do the Journey Women um, seminar. And also, uh, there's a Camino seminar coming up in at, outside of Asheville to to study to be a hospi to, hospitalier, which is a volunteer to people on the Camino. So since I'm a perpetual volunteer, uh, and I just did the Camino, and that's really what I wanted to do was volunteer. I really wasn't planning on doing my hundred kilometers and and having shin problems, but. I did it, and so I may go up to North Carolina at the end of March to do a training program. So those are my two um, things that have travel in mind uh, out of Florida, which is, I came back from Portugal, and this is the wild, wild west, whereas in Europe, they're 90% vaccinated. You get a PCR test to go to a bar, to go to a home Christmas party. You show your vaccination card to get in and out of a restaurant. And I come back to Florida and it's a wild, wild west, but mm -hmm. that, I don't even want to get into the politics. <laughs> it's just disheartening. But anyway, my joy is to travel. I have family things like Tracy that I have to take care of, but there are two seminars um, and I may even forego the, the, um, the, the conversational immersion programs in, in Poland and Prague. So we'll see. Uh, I've done them both. I've been to both Prague and Poznan, so we'll see. But I'd love to come back to Sonoma or wherever the uh, wherever the seminar is going to be. And uh, and I was just in Asheville in North Carolina for um, Servas organization, and I taught two Qigong classes. So you know, I don't make these things. I just have to put it on my vision board to do that, and then I'll at least have some travel in there. Whereas. I'll still take care of my responsibilities as a Beautiful. Thank you, Nancy. I'm sorry, I was Jen late. No worries. Jenny. Uh, okay. Um, it's been very interesting listening to everyone and how everyone's adapted and what's next in their life. Um, I've been retired for, oh gosh, 14 years, have filled my life with all kinds of things I've wanted to do 
and COVID's put a bit of a hold on it. But what has happened is I've learned to adjust. I think we all have um, and enjoy what's local. Um, my passion is the outdoors, um, health, connections, culture, uh, new experiences. And um, I think I'm ready to take a whole lot more risks. I used to be very risk um, friendly, but I think we've all put a pause on that. So I think um, novelty and stimulation are really the things I've missed. And I think those are gonna be what is on the agenda next. So that's where I'm at. Beautiful. Thank you, Jenny. So we have only have a few minutes left. We're not going to get through everything. But the next thing I want you guys all to tell me and just tell me in uh, a single word, don't give me the context. Thinking about all of the things that you said, all the things that bring you joy and purpose and passion, what is one area of your life that is begging uh, for attention in 2022 and maybe needs to see some changes? Jane. My health. Perfect. Donna. My physical, physical ability. Sorry. No worries. Perfect. Donna. Uh, being present. Anne. I'm sorry, pass. I was distracted. <laughs> okay. Oh, what's one area, based on everything you said before, what's one area of your life that's begging for attention in 2022 and maybe needs to see some changes? Writing. Okay. Mary. Um, just being present. Sandra. I think you're frozen. Suzanne. Courage. Carolyn. Um, doing things that bring me joy versus what I'm <clears throat> focusing okay. on. That. Diana. Enjoying the here and now. Maria. Anxiety. Joanne. Sorry. Sorry. Emotional and physical health. Michelle. Patience. Christine. Making new memories. Maureen. My work. Deanna. More joy and love. Tracy. <laughs> Starting to let go. Perfect. Mary Lee. Being present in the moment. Nancy. Stop procrastinating so I get my book this year. Jenny. Have fun. Okay, cool. So what you guys are going to do, and I will email all of you uh, some instructions and activities that you can do to, to get to these things. But I want you to think of a word or a phrase that reflects the change you'd most like to see in that area of your life. And then once you've come up with that word, I want you to think of some ways that you can transform that intention that you've set for 2022 into action. And I'm not talking big audacious goals. I'm talking little small everyday actions that can put you on the path to making that intention uh, a reality by the end of 2022. But I will send you some things to think about uh, in both regards uh, by email tonight. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us on this first community call of 2022. We have so many more planned on a, a variety of topics uh, that are deep and meaningful and engaging and some that are just absolutely fun. Um, so I hope you stick with us on this journey. Uh, thank you as always for sharing so deeply of yourselves. You are all very, very inspiring uh, and I have enjoyed this hour very much. Love you all. I think, I think um, something I just wanna say, we, you know, when we put out our first issue last night, um, I, I won't, it says, this is your year. And I really, after this call, I just feel like it's so right. It's so right for this moment. And I wanna thank you all for, you know, you're all, you've all been, most of you have been sticking with us over the last year and we've all these transitions and, you know, it's, it's always, 
these calls are always great to reflect and learn from each other. So thank you for sharing. Um, and I can't wait to see what this year is going to be like for you. And, uh, and a year from now, we'll have another call like this and, and look back and say, oh my God, that was a hell of a year. And I lived that year for me. And that's, that's my aspiration for all of you is, is all of us is that we live for ourselves because we've all been giving through this whole time to everybody else. And this is our time. This is our year. So, um, so I'm really, I'm so overwhelmed by, by listening to you all today. So thank you. And focusing on you is not selfish. No. It's really all there is when, when you are okay with yourself and uh, you have so much more to give to others. So it actually serves the, a higher purpose too. And it serves the collective to focus on you. So do it, give yourself permission. Love you all. all. Right. <laughs>